Uh, my name is Yuming Chen, and I'm from Origin Lab Technical Support Team. So in today's webinar, I'm going to talk about basic graphing in Origin. And uh, just to let you know that uh, in this afternoon at uh, 2 o'clock, we have another webinar regarding data processing. So welcome to come and join us. OK, so now let's start it. Um, so today I'm going to talk about graphing. Um, the, uh, first, I will uh, just introduce some basic concepts in Origin regarding graphs. And I will show you a couple of different examples on uh, making different types of graph. And uh, I will also talk about the publication of uh, publishing graphs. And uh, uh, you have uh, what, what options you have to export your graph, put uh, save graph into image files, or um, put your graph into Word or PowerPoint slides. Okay, so let's uh, start with the uh, um, some basics of graph in origin. Okay, so in origin, if you uh, take a look at this, it's uh, like a typical graph page window, and uh, uh, it, it is like a container which ha you you have your graph in it. So if you look at it, the the white area in this window is the page area. So it's like a canvas that you can put your uh, multiple different layers on the top of it. And uh, in this graph, you see we have two layers, layer one and layer two. They are indicated by the number on the top upper left. Okay, so each layer can contain, okay, so each layer can contain one set of X, Y axis. So basically, um, if you want to uh, uh, have like a double Y axis graph, so you, you are needed like two, um, two layers. So in this case, I have two separate layers. Each has one set of x, y axis. Okay, so in each layer, you can have uh, multiple data plots. So for the first layer, I have one scatter plot, and uh, for the second one, I have uh, two line plots. Okay, so one thing is that um, you can see the hierarchical structure of the, uh, of the graph from the object manager panel. So it's on the right side of the uh, uh, origin workspace so at the top level it's the page it's a graph three and under the page level i have two layers and uh, one and two plots for each layer okay so another thing i'm going to mention is the, about the uh, um, customization of the graph so in origin it, it is very uh, simple to customize the graph you have uh, um, so every like element on the graph is clickable. I can select the plot, uh, the plot. I can select the layer. So if you want to edit uh, each element, the simplest thing to do is just to double click on it. So if I double click on the plot, I will open the plot details dialog where you can change the format of the uh, uh, every aspects of the plot. So like for scatter plot, you can change the uh, symbol size, symbol color or the shape of the symbol okay so um, if you would want to change the any settings of the layer like the background of the layer you just double click on the layer and it will pop up the plot detail dialog in the layer level and where you can change the uh, uh, the, the format of the layer okay um, with that said we have also have like the property dialog for the axis if you double click the axis, you, you will see the uh, axis property dialog where you can customize the uh, axis. Uh, another thing I'm going to mention is the mini toolbar. So the mini toolbar idea is, is introduced in the recent origin versions. So when you click any area on the plot, it will pop up this small toolbar, floating toolbar. And uh, you can customize the uh, the uh, the, the plot or the axis from the mini toolbar as well. I will show in a moment a, a different uh, like uh, applications of using mini toolbar. Okay, so this is just to uh, uh, give you a, a, a brief introduction of the of the graph page in Origin, and uh, I'm going also want to mention that it's a kind of a flexible to move the layer around in the page in a page and resize the layers things like that. And of course, you can double click on the layer to uh, customize the, 
uh, to put a, a precise, a precise uh, a width height in the, the, the unit. Okay, so let's go to our first example. So in this example, I'm going to show you how to plot a simple uh, XY plot. So this is the uh, worksheet in origin. It is uh, like the data container. But it is slightly different from the uh, Excel spreadsheet that uh, uh, one major difference is that other than the data, it has a metadata on the for each column. So in origin, we have these uh, column label rows which contains the information of each column, okay? So like uh, uh, from this, take this as example, we know what the X column is. It's, it's the wavelength values and in a unit of nanometer. And you can also put the, uh, what the, 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 like the sample information on, in the comments. Uh, these column label rows will reflect it in when you make a plot. So I will show you how to, um, uh, make a simple plot from this uh, worksheet. Uh, another thing is the uh, column designation. So you you will see this uh, column A is designated as X column, and the column B is designated Y column. So this is also important when you make a scatter plot. Okay, so um, to make a plot, which is also very simple, you need to first highlight a column, then go to the menu plot, and uh, you can select different plot types in origin. So in origin, we, we have more than uh, 100 plot types. They are categorized into different categories. So um, like simple graph, like scatter plot, line plot, bar plot are under this uh, basic 2D category. Uh, we, can, we also have like a multi-panel plot, uh, which as I said before, like a, a multiple layers graph. And also we have uh, different types of uh, uh, statistical graph, like a box chart, different kinds of histogram, different kinds of violin plot, and you can also check that. And uh, for like a 3D data, we have contour plot and also like a 3D plot, okay. We also support many kinds of uh, specialized graph and you will find it, uh, what, what you are interested. Okay, so for this, Data set. I have XY data. I will start with a scatter plot, which is simple. Go to plot, basic 2D, and I choose a scatter plot. Okay, so when I make the plot, you will see the, uh, the legend. Okay, the legend of the graph. The text is from the comments of the, uh, of the, of the data. And the long uh, and the axis title, and the y axis title, and the x axis title are from the long name of each um, column. So if you want to, um, you can, you know, pre uh, organize the, uh, the, the information in your worksheet and make them show in your graph this way. Okay. Now let me make some uh, uh, changes on the graph. So first I'm going to say um, I want to change the uh, symbol, um, I will change it from square to circle and I'll make it smaller so I can change the size. And I can change the color to red. If I want to, that to show on the graph, I just click apply and it, you, will, you will see the change, okay? And uh, uh, let me just make it smaller, okay. Let me move it to the right. Next thing I'm going to change is I want to add some grid lines, okay, for the axis. So which is a axis property. So I just double click on the axis and I can go to the grid grids tab. And I want to add grid lines for both vertical and horizontal. Then I can just uh, use shift to select both and uh, click the show, uh, check the show box. And uh, I can show the minor grid lines as well. Okay. Um, for example, I want to customize the uh, tick labels. Okay. Then I can go to tick labels. So I want to only change the X axis tick label. 
I can change it to this different display format. Say in this case, I'm choosing scientific and click apply. Okay. Uh, say if I want to change the background of this uh, graph, which is a layer property, the background. So I can select the layer. So you see the, the, the blue uh, frame indicating that uh, I'm selecting the, fr uh, selecting the layer. Then I double click and it will bring up this uh, layer property um, dialog and I can change the background to some uh, uh, light color, say uh, light yellow. Okay. okay, then I sort of like customize this graph. Okay, so this is, uh, I just show you how to use the uh, uh, property dialogs to, to customize the graph. Um, I'm going to show you how to use the mini toolbar to customize the graph. So um, mini toolbar is recently introduced into Origin, which will make the customization of graph much easier. Okay, so let me first again select column B and make a scatter plot. So this time I can just select a scatter plot from the recently used category. Okay, I, I don't have to go back to the uh, to to find that on the two D category okay so to change uh, without open the without opening the uh, property dialog i can simply click once on the plot and it will pop up this uh, mini toolbar dialog on uh, mini toolbar then i will just uh, click this to change the color and uh, change the shape change the uh, size you see it's much easier okay and for applying the grid lines i can click on the axis and uh, find this grid line button and select it. And I'll say both. I will say add to both major um, tick and uh, minor tick. And I can also click this button, say apply format to. So let's say apply the format of grid lines to other axis. So in this case, apply to X axis as well. Okay. And for the uh, background color, I can click on the layer. It will pop up the mini toolbar for the layer. Okay, so here is the layer background color button. And I click that and I select light yellow. Okay. Um, but uh, I have to say that not every uh, thing can be changed with the mini toolbar. For example, like the um, tick label format. So I, I still have to double click and go into the uh, access dialog to change that, okay. But some like uh, very frequent, frequently used uh, um, format changing options are available with the mini, mini toolbar, okay. Okay, now let's go to next example, plot X, Y, Y, Y data. So in this case, I have these uh, worksheet. It contains multiple Y columns. So to, okay, so it's like a spectrum uh, measured at a different temperatures. So the temperature info are in the comments of each column. So to visualize the uh, multiple Y columns, I, the first thing I can do is I select all the Y columns and go to the plot. In this case, I'm going to make a line plot. Okay, I find the line plot under the basic 2D category. Okay, so in, Origin, once you, 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 you highlight multiple columns and make a line plot, you will see that the color of the lines are automatically incremented. So that's because these, uh, uh, these curves are, are grouped in this case. So when the curves are grouped, you can change the uh, format of the, uh, all the curves all at once as a group. So for example, if I double click, Let's say double click on the line and I will open this uh, um, the plot details dialog. And on the first plot, it will show it will add another tab called group here. So here you can change the line color. Say if I change it to a different color list. And when I click apply, the new color list will be applied to all the curves on the on the graph. Okay, this is the uh, 
um, like uh, if I change the uh, say the thickness of the line, the same format will be applied to other curves within this group. Okay. Another thing I'm going to show you is that so right now the uh, all the lines are overlapped with each other, which is not easy to identify each curve. So we can change we can we can stack the curves vertically. So if I go to the layers and go to stack and uh, let's say auto. So now the curves are stacked, but it's out of the wing uh, out of the frames. Like I can click this rescale Y button on the right side and it will all uh, within the, the, the layer. And uh, another option is that uh, I have this uh, legend showing the temperature of each curve. I can move the legend to on the side of each curve, which is easier to see. So I can just click on the legend, and from this mini toolbar, I have this attach to plots button. Yeah, there are multiple options in for the legend mini toolbar. You can check it later. So for the color, I was use auto, then the the the, le the, the text color will follow the curve. Okay, let's see. So the legends are added to the uh, to each curve. Okay. So I will show you uh, diff two different options to visualize like a multiple Y or like multiple spectrums data. So one is the uh, waterfall, okay. Again, I select all the Ys and I go to plot. So in this case, I'm going to, to 3D category and the 3D waterfall. So this is a different way to show your multiple Y data. So especially for like a complicated spectrum, it's a, a different way to, you, you can compare different spectrums. So for the tick label, now it, by default, um, the Z axis is using the long name as the tick, tick labels. I can double click to change that. Instead of using long name, so I can use comments. Okay, tick label source is coming from the comments of each column. Okay, so now it's changed to the uh, temperature. And uh, again, I can uh, say, I can feel the, the 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 area under the curve with the some color so i go to the uh, um pattern tab and the um, under the field color i can choose by plot and uh, choose the increment color list okay yeah this is just an option so for then the the border color i just choose to use a black just to let you know you have this option you know to in origin to to make a, a multiple y plot another thing i'm going to another plot type is the graph browser so let's say i first just select nothing okay without select anything i can go to plot so i have this browser go to color lines it will list all the all the columns in the worksheet on the left side of this graph type. And now it's just show amplitude. Let's say I can right click long, long name and the click comment and it will show the, uh, can turn off the long name. It's, it's not very informative. Okay, so if I just choose different columns, it will show on the, on the graph. What is nice about this, you can select, uh, columns as you want it and compare uh, individual column, individual spectrums. So you can select all as well. It will show all on the graph. Okay, so this is another very nice tool to for you to compare the spectrums in origin. Okay, now let's go to next example, multiple Y axis. Okay, so in this case, I have a, a worksheet with uh, three Y columns. Uh, we notice that uh, each Y column has has different units. Okay, so uh, which means if I uh, plot all these three into one plot, I, it will it will make no sense. So let's say if I select simply select all three Y columns and make a uh, say line plot, they're kind of uh, messed, right? Let me close this. 
So what I'm going to do is uh, since these three y columns uh, are share the same x column, so share the same x axis. What I'm going to do is I just want to move the like one plot into a a second y axis. Okay. So let's say if I select the red curve, it was it was also show that it, this is plotted from column C. I can use the column object. So I can here right click on this plot and select um, move to second y axis. Okay. Now the uh, this uh, second uh, y column plot is moved to the se second axis. So I will move the 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 other the other one to the third y axis. So in this case, I am going to first in, uh, create the the third layer with the third y axis. Okay, I click this button, add right y layer. Okay, it will add another y layer. It has a little bit of mercy at this moment on the graph, but don't worry about that. I will yeah. Also, I will show you. Here is the button called fit page to layer because something is outside of the, um, the, uh, the, 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 the page area. So, okay, now let's select this position curve. This is a third curve. I can move, yeah, actually, you can simply just drag the position to the third layer, okay? And uh, so for each layer, I'm going to rescale the y-axis so that they all show on the graph, okay? Then I want, I'm just going to uh, customize the graph a little bit, like uh, the the third layer. I change the color to blue. Okay, then I can change the axis color to follow the line color. Okay, so if I select this axis, I can this time I can go to the toolbar. So here is the the line border color. So I can set it to auto. So it's getting red, and for the tick label. I can use the mini toolbar I showed you before, set it to auto, and also the title, change it to auto. Okay, and repeat that for the uh, the third layer. Okay, so now you get this uh, um, three y axis plot. Okay. So there's a of of course there's a simple way to make the three y axis plot. This is, um, I was just show you what the other option you have. Okay, the so simplest way is you simply select all three y columns and go to plot, and go to multiple panel axis. So we have these multiple y, uh, multiple y plots, um, graph type. So let's say three y's, uh, this one three y y y. Okay, so it's just to directly make a graph like what I made here, okay? Okay, so now let's go to next example, uh, box plot. Okay, so um, this data set, we have the uh, the sales data for different technical companies, okay? And it's uh, quarterly data from uh, year 2000, uh, 2010 to 2015. Um, I want to compare the means, mean sales of each company among all these years. So the, you can think of it, you can, you can make a box chart, okay? So let's say I select all the Y columns and I go to plot. And uh, this time I'm going to do a statistical plot. So the box chart, the simplest one. Okay. So let's make some changes of the graph. I can click this rotate button to rotate the tick label. And I can uh, change this uh, box. Say in this case, I not only want to see the box, I also want to see the uh, data. So I can choose in, yeah, I can, I can use this bar and the data overlap plot type. Okay. And uh, it also shows some extra lines. I don't want this line. So I can click this button. So this is a median line. I can read from it. So I can turn turn it off. Just choose none. So, and uh, I can also uh, change the color of the bar. Uh, let's see. 
So the fill color of the bar to be by plot. Yeah, I can just choose this one, okay? And I can also change the, the symbol color, okay? The symbol color, um, so I can color each symbol by, by the quarter value in column A. So this is not available for in mini toolbar, so I have to double click on the symbol and go into the property, uh, property, property details dialog and go to symbol. And here, let's say the symbol color, I will say by points, and I indexed to column A. Okay, let's click apply. So this is a one way to color each symbols. So to use a column, use a column to define the specify the symbol color. Okay. Now you can see. Oh, another thing I'm going to change is the, is the error bar. So I would like to show the standard deviation of the of the uh, the group data uh, group of data. So let's go to the box tab. So right now the error bar is show is showing the outlier. So I can change that to set standard deviation, and uh, just the one standard deviation is good. Okay, click OK. Okay, now it shows properly for the. Uh, um, Another thing I would just want to show you is the uh, data highlighter tool. So it's here. So I want to say, okay, which uh, there are multiple points, the symbols here. Which point gives us the, the largest uh, quarterly sales? Say so it's at this point. I can, I don't know which quarter it is. I can use this uh, uh, data highlighter tool to select this data point. Then it will highlight the row with, in the worksheet, which uh, corresponding to this uh, data point. So it's a, you, you know that the fourth quarter of the 2010 has the largest sales, which is also the uh, Nokia Microsoft company, okay? So another alternative of the box chart is the violin plot. So let's say I can select all these columns and go to plot and uh, statistical. In this time, I'm going to choose half violin, okay. So the violin plot not only gives you the, the some simple statistics size mean or standard deviation, it also gives you the distribution of the data points in each group, okay. So this is just an option. Yeah, I can build the color with a color list. Okay. Yeah, this is another another example of uh, uh, showing the statistics of the data. Okay, now let's go to next example, XYZ contour. So sometimes users are handling these uh, uh, like uh, 3D data or XYZ data. So the 3D data, so in this case, I first need to change. So it's a X and a Y and a Z data. So the, 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 the necessary thing to do is to uh, change the X, uh, the column designation of the Z data into Z, okay? So now it's column Z, so origin now recognize this as a uh, XYZ data. And uh, um, like a contour plot is, very, uh, is often used in uh, examining like the morphology of like a thin film, such kind of uh, usage. So in this case, I have, uh, um, I can simply make a contour plot by selecting the Z axis then go to the plot and the contour. So contour plot, okay. So obviously the uh, the, the red area is the, the peak and the blue area is the valley on the, on the graph. And uh, let's see what uh, other thing I can do is, uh, uh, at, at the first glance you see that the graph is not very smooth. Is this uh, still some uh, boundaries? So this is because we uh, we are kind of like low of the levels. I can increase the level of this uh, contour plot. So I use the mini toolbar to launch this uh, set levels dialog. I can change, uh, increase the number of minor levels. Okay, and click OK. So it's becoming more smooth. I can also use the mini toolbar to change the uh, palette. I can, oh, this, this one. 
I can change it to more uh, colorful, let's say like a pumpkin patch. Okay, a different palette. Another thing I can do is uh, I can add labels. Say, use this mini toolbar to show contour labels. And when once the label show on the graph, you can change the label size, make it smaller. Okay. Sometimes people also want to extract the contour lines from the graph. So I can just select this graph and slowly click twice and it will select one contour line. Then I can right click and then extract contour lines. Okay. So sometimes you once you have this contour line, you can use this as a boundary to uh, on the graph. Let's say if I copy the contour line data into a new x y uh, new columns aside the, the original data, I can use this contour lines to uh, only plot the area be, uh, between within this contour line. Okay, so this is another option in the contour plot. You can specify the boundary of the of the contour. So let's say the boundary x data. Let this time I'm I choose column D and the boundary y data column E, and I I can just remove the smoothing. Just click OK. So that yeah, this has some usage for some customers that you only want to show the area between the contour lines. OK. OK. Now let's go to the next example surface plot. Okay, so um, in this example, I'm going to show a 3D surface plot. Again, I have these uh, uh, XYZ data, and I choose plot. This time, I'm going to choose from the 3D category, 3D color map. Okay. Um, this is like a, a 3D graph in origin. So it's a uh, Color is color mapping to the the height or the z values of the column. So to rotate the a 3D graph in origin is simple. You can hit uh, press on the R key and use mouse to rotate the 3D graph. So it helps you to examine a 3D graph, and you can also change that to a um, a different palette. Use a toolbar as well. So not much. Uh, option for now, but I can select the uh, different palette. And I can also apply smooth uh, smoothing to the 3D graph. So you can double click on the 3D graph and go into the plot details dialog, and then go to the contour info tab, and you can apply some smoothing. Okay. And uh, you can also Add, add lighting to the graph. Yeah, it, some people would like that. And uh, you can hold the S key on the keyboard and uh, change the uh, uh, light source direction. Okay. Okay. Uh, another thing is, uh, okay, I can also use these XYZ data to make a 3D scatter plot. So if I highlight column C, go to plot. Let's say 3D scatter plot. Okay. Yeah, this this is another way to visualize the 3D data. Um, you may also want to add this uh, scatter plot on top of this uh, surface plot. Okay, uh, because uh, I, I have to let you know that uh, uh, for 3D data, so so for 3D graph, origin can only have one layer. Okay. So you don't you don't have the option to like say add another layer and then add a plot to it, but you can do um, that with the layer contents dialog. Okay, right click on the layer uh, indicator, click layer contents, and it will show on the right side what is already on the graph. So right now the column Z uh, column C is plotted as a surface on the graph. So next I will plot Z again as a scatter plot. Okay, so in this drop down, I can choose 3D scatter and uh, click the button add plot. It will be added to the existing graph and I click OK. So that you see the scatter plot are added. Okay, you can 
customize the, it a little bit, like uh, uh, remove the drop lines. I don't want the drop line. And the, for the symbol, I can sh uh, make it larger. Let's say, okay, so um, let's say show as a sphere. Okay. Uh, now the this I uh, just show you how to like uh, uh, overlapping how to overlap a three D scatter plot and a three D surface plot. Uh, of course, um, in Origin we have a different um, uh, data structure called a matrix. It, it's using to storing to store three D data. So the matrix can also be used to make a surface plot. Okay. So I'm going. I'm not going to cover too much about matrix uh, in this uh, webinar. And uh, if you are interested, you can uh, come back in, in this afternoon. That's uh, about the data processing. Okay. That they all, that will that webinar will cover more on the data processing in worksheet and matrix. Okay. So this is also um, on the, the the 3D surface plot can also be generated from a matrix plot matrix data. Okay. Now let's go to next example, graph maker. <clears throat> okay, so this is a worksheet uh, of the performance of different uh, cars of different make and different uh, year. So uh, in this case, we have uh, new, these new types of columns called categorical data with called category, ca with categorical data, okay. So what I'm going to do is I want to check the relationship between the power and the, the engine displacement for different years. Okay, I want to like uh, split the uh, split the uh, scatter plot into multiple panels based on the year. Okay, so the easiest thing to to, uh, to do this task is to use the plot uh, graph maker tool. Okay, let me show you what the graph maker tool is. So this is very uh, a neat tool that uh, you have all the columns listed on the left. You can drag the columns into uh, individual entry on the, in the middle. So if I I want to like plot plot um, power and the engine displacement, I can just drag these two into this uh, entry. Then um, on the upper row, I have different plot types. So right now it's a scatter plot. When you hover your mouse onto a different data type, it, the graph will get, in, get updated, okay? And you can uh, just uh, click to, to, to confirm that your choice, okay? So right now I just leave it as a scatter plot. And I want to now to split, okay, split the graph into different years. So I can move the year to the vertical panel, okay? So you see the graph, are, the, 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 the plot are split into different years, okay? And uh, what's more, I can do a fitting, like uh, say, for example, I'm doing a linear fit. So, and I want, I add the confidence bands and the prediction bands. And uh, there are more options. If you click this button, I can add a equation, the fitted equation and the Pearson's R value. And I can change the fitted color to green, for example. Okay. Once you are satisfied with this graph, you can click OK to generate. Okay. Yeah, you can, of course, you can uh, uh, customize the graph even more. But right now, I just leave it as it is. Okay, so let's say, now I have the data, the plots from year 1980 up to 2020, uh, 2004. So let's say I, if I now just duplicate the worksheet and I change the filter on this first column. So this is like similar filter as in Excel. Now I change the data to only show the other years. Okay. Now I have the data for the other years. I want to duplicate this graph. Okay. I want to duplicate this graph with this new worksheet. Okay. Yeah. There's a another option in origin called the batch plotting duplicate. Okay, then I'm just going to batch plot with a new book. 
and uh, just select this new created workbook and the plot will be this will be plotted into uh, individual graphs okay let's click OK okay now the same graph is plotted with the different years okay yeah this is a very useful um, I mean usage in origin to duplicate the graph with the same um, same format okay Let's see, also, that uh, also supports the duplicate with the different columns. So if I, uh, this is a pre-plotted graph. If I select the graph, it shows the source of the graph data is from power. So I can also duplicate this graph with other columns. Let's say I can right click on the title bar, then click duplicate. And then in this case, I'm going to batch plot with new columns. Okay, let's say column D and E, and also plot into individual graphs. Click OK. Okay, so you see the um, duplicate the graph format is that kind of simple. You just have this option. Okay, now let's go to next example, color management. Um, in Origin 2021, we introduced this new color manager um, tool. Okay. I was just first to show you this tool, and uh, and I'll we'll, we'll show a couple of examples of uh, application of this tool. So on the tool menu, color manager. Okay, so right now, uh, on the right side, I have all these all these uh, color list or palettes. You see that that is available in the GUI in Origin. Okay, so on the left side, I have I can have a like a, a more Color lists, it, which is uh, in the in, uh, in in the collection in origin. So uh, first of all, you can uh, if you want to show the color list in the GUI, you can just select a color list on the left and add it to the to right. Okay. So now we can have this uh, uh, get a new color list or color palette from web or from a data file, and the I just list some of the website and the color list file types here that you can go to this website and find the uh, customized color list and download and to use them. Okay, I will just show a simple example. Let's say I import from a web. Origin will pre-list some of these uh, color list here. So let's say I want to yeah, import a color list called winter so from a, uh, some website. Let's click OK. So this file is installed as a color list. OK. So you will see it's added to the color list of GUI as well. So the winter color list. Then let's say I can click this and fill that with a new color list. OK. It's that simple. OK. Uh, I'm uh, Next example I'm going to show is how I can copy a uh, a color scheme from an existing graph to your own graph. Okay, let me open this. Uh, uh, so, this is a picture actually. So this picture already have this color scheme, and you think it is, it is very good. And I want to apply that into my own graph. So here is another option. Let's say, yeah, let me make it a little smaller. I can go to this color manager tool. And uh, let's say click the new button to create a new color list. So I have I can use this color uh, pick tool. Let's say just a pick color from the existing graph, and uh, I click replace to replace the first color in the color list. Then I just uh, select the second color and add as new, and uh, select the third color and uh, add as new, and uh, select the fourth color. And just repeat this. So now I have this new color list, which is you see the how easy it is to create a new color list. Let's say my color list, and save it. Okay, then it, then you can click this and fill with the newly created color list, my color list. Okay, see how simple it is, right? 
Okay, now let's go. We still have some time. So let's go to the public publishing topic. Okay, so to export a graph in origin, the traditional way to do is we have this uh, export graph dialog. Um, this tool has been in origin for multiple versions. It's a complicated uh, um, dialog, but with uh, many options. Okay, so uh, so first, like on the right side, it's a preview. You can click, uh, check this preview, auto preview checkbox to see the preview on the right side. And uh, of course, we support multiple different like image formats, like the vector format, like the EPS, EMF, or PDF. We support the raster image file uh, type, like uh, PNG, uh, JPG, TIF, for example. Like, let's say I select a TIF. So um, by default, the page size of the graph will, will, be, will be used. And, uh, Will be filled in this page size uh, image size area. Of course, you can change the image size. Let's say if I change to 4.6, yes, because for some journal it has some requirements. So 4.6 as width is the requirement for the journal size. I just put it here. So you can uh, 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 change the size in the export graph dialog, and uh, the you can also change the DPI resolution. So uh, of course, if you lower the resolution, you will uh, you will you will see the, the the entire graph image preview in this in the right side. Okay, so for the size, the, we know that it has uh, some uh, DPI requirement, like six hundred um, DPI. Okay. Other than that, we all, we can also um, have this option, say like uh, the margin control. You can control which area on the graph that you want to um, export. I will show that in next example. So for now, I will just save it, okay? Let's say you can save it to uh, anywhere, okay? Uh, let's say, let's go to next example, export margin. Okay, so for this graph, you see there are some text objects outside the uh, graph page. So when I export graph, again, when I turn on the preview, so let's say if I go to the uh, margin control, so if I set auto as margin control, the origin is smart enough to include only the, 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 the graph within the page area. So if I instead choose border, so the border, when you choose border, the origin will try to cover the all the uh, uh, graph objects on the page area. So the text object will be included. Of course, if you select tight, it's also sh showing that. Sometimes you don't want that, so uh, you have to choose auto. So it will also only cover this uh, page area. Another thing I'm going to show you is the uh, export, um, whatever we call the export margin offsets. Okay, when you select this, you will see a green frame on the graph. So uh, this shows which the graph area will be exported when you select auto in that uh, export graph dialog. Say, for example, I only want to export this image to, uh, um, to a file. So let's say apply and uh, okay. Again, let's go to export graph dialog. Uh, in this case, I only want to export this. Yeah, so when I choose auto as margin control, only the, uh, the, the this, uh, lower left area is getting exported. Okay, so this is another option in origin that you can select the, uh, uh, the wanted area to be to get up, uh, output. Next is the, uh, the I was going to introduce this nice app called the Graph Publisher. So say I want to export this graph and uh, uh, send it to the, uh, for example, the science journal. So, but I don't, I know some requirements for the journal, like the, it has some requirement for the image size, the resolution, the text size, things like that. Origin has this nice app called Graph Publisher. 
it will help you to examine each aspects of the graph and help you to change the format to uh, to satisfy the requirement of the journal. Let's say I choose this export for publication button. So let's say check graph element. There's a drop down list, a list of some of the journals, let's say science, for example. Yeah, just to let you know that if you have uh, some other journals, uh, you know the, uh, uh, you know the, uh, the, the, the requirement, you can let us know and we can add that to this list. Okay, so for the science journal, it first has a page size requirement. It should be less than 4.5, uh, 4.6 inches as the width. If I double click this uh, graph and go to the page level, and we'll see the width is above that, right? So I, I can click apply. So the, 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 the graph will get, you know, the, the dimension will get changed according to the journal, okay? Then I can cl click next. In this page, it will check all the tech, uh, all the font sizes. Okay, all failed because uh, it needs the font size to be larger than eight. If I click on the graph, you can check the font size on the on the toolbar. It's seven, which is below eight, right? So, it, so I simply click check these boxes and click apply. So it will automatically adjust the font size to meet the requirement. Okay, go to next. Like this time, it checks the uh, the line thickness, the axis lines, the, uh, uh, the the plot lines, things like that. And I click apply to uh, use this to 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 adjust the setting. And you can also, if you want, you can add some uh, uh, margins. Okay. Of course, it you can export the graph. And it, sh it shows finished, okay? Yeah, this is nice too. I just encourage you to try that. Okay, next I'm going to show you the, like put your graph into a PowerPoint or Word. So here I have this graph already made in origin. Uh, and uh, I have say, I have this Word file. I want to put a graph in, in this uh, Word document. Um, the first thing I, you can think of is that I, I export the graph into an image file, then I insert that image file into Word. But there's a more easy way. If you right click on the uh, title bar, you can select copy page and copy graph as picture. So two options. So I will show you um, copy page. Okay, so when you click copy page, the graph will be copied as a OLE object. So what the OLE object means, it, it contains all the data that generates this graph. When you paste into, uh, say, into Word, not only the image is copied over, but the, also the data that plot the image is also copied over. So what is nice about this is once you uh, make this uh, uh, Word document and send it to your friend, and then you can, in the future to edit the graph further. Okay, so in, in Word, you can double click this graph. So it will launch an origin instance and then you can modify the graph. Say, again, let's say I use a mini toolbar to change the, uh, let's say change the color and the change the line, um, line, co uh, line color. Yeah, just make some simple change and I close the, origin instance, you will see the graph will getting updated on the, uh, in the word, which is nice, right? Another thing I'm going to show you is, uh, um, if I have say in this project, I already made a, a bunch of graphs. I want to um, like dump all the graphs into a PowerPoint file. Okay. We also have this uh, nice, um, app called send graphs to PowerPoint. You can also dump all the uh, graphs into a Word or document, of course. So we have this send graphs to Word app as well. And uh, let's see how it works. Okay, so once I click on the app, it will launch this dialog. 
and you can first to set, uh, to set the graph scope. Let's say I want to all the I want all the graphs in the project to be exported, to be uh, moved to the point point. Of course, you can delete some unwanted ones. Okay. <laughs> okay, so you can put the graph into a slide PowerPoint slides as a picture or the OLE object. Okay, so if you put in a, as a picture, it, the, 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 the PowerPoint file size will get getting smaller. And you will, um, like, uh, you can, you can change, change the margins. Okay. And you can also, um, well, uh, you can also, like, uh, want to keep the aspect ratio. Otherwise, you, the, the graph will get stretched in the slides. And you can also put the title on the top of each slide. Okay. And you can also choose to uh, send it to an opened PowerPoint file or create a new PowerPoint file. Okay, so right now I have already have this PowerPoint file opened. Uh, so this has the two slides now. The first is the, 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 the title slide, and the, the second is where you, I want to put it in the images. So I want to dump all the images from the second slides all the way. Okay, then I can select here, like starting slides index, let's say two. And uh, for like multiple graphs, imported it was create a new slides to 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 take the new graph okay so right now it's the it will automatically fill the powerpoint file name let's click send you will see the graph will be put into origin to, into powerpoint slides automatically And it, yeah, as I also controls, I also control the, uh, the the position of each graph. Okay. So this is a very convenient. Then you can add the text to the slides, maybe on the side, and uh, to further to um, to customize the PowerPoint. Okay. Let's close this. Okay, I think that's all for today's webinar. Yeah, this, uh, that's all for today's webinar. So if you, uh, we will have a, a poll next, then please uh, uh, feel free to send us the suggestions and the feedbacks. And uh, thank you for attending.